hope you brought your pencil because class is in session. Today's subject is timing chains. I don't know who the fuck classes are, but that just gave me a headache. And not just any timing, GM timing in the 2830 and 3.6 engines. If you do happen to have one of these engines at around 100,000 miles, you probably already know that you're gonna have to replace the timing chains. But maybe not as soon as you think. Since this is such a common issue in the timing chains and these engines stretching, that a lot of mechanics or technicians, as soon as they see a handful of timing codes, they immediately just quote you for a timing replacement. Most of them don't actually understand what all these different codes mean and how they work together. So, real quickly, P0010 through P0024 are your common codes that are going to show up on a 36 or 30. And before you can even begin to understand what any of these codes mean, you have to understand the different parts and their differences. The first one is going to be the sensors. These are what tell the computer the position of the camshaft. Now, these engines have four of them. You have a bank one exhaust, bank one intake, you have a bank two intake, and a bank two exhaust. Generally, when these go bad, you're just going to have a circuit code, which is not a big deal, and it is very easy to narrow down and replace the sensor to fix that issue. Now, the big one that people have trouble separating and understanding is the solenoid and the actuator. The solenoid is what ultimately controls and tells cam gear or phaser what to do. When power is applied at the solenoid, it directs oil flow through these three different passages that either advance or retard this gear. This is easy to replace. This is not. So if you have a P0010, 13, 20, or 23, which all mean actuator solenoid valve control circuit, that means that there is an issue with the circuit. The, the solenoid itself probably went bad. So if you have one or more of these codes circled in black, you're most likely okay. On the other hand, if you have an 11 or 14 paired together, both for bank one intake and exhaust, that is not good. That is for system performance. Same thing goes for if you have 21 or 24 combined. That is for bank two. What I'm referring to is bank one and both of those codes means that both of these are out of sync. If both of these are out of sync, the only way that both of them can be is through this one chain, which probably means that this chain stretched. Same goes for bank two, 21 and 24. That means that it has to do with both of these cam phasers or the cam actuators. They are both on that same chain, meaning that this chain probably stretched, causing both of them to be off a little bit to pull these codes, and that's gonna mean that you need to have your timing replaced. Now, the confusion lies here between 16 and 19, where it says crankshaft position, intake camshaft position, not plausible, bank one, or exhaust bank one, or intake exhaust bank two. Now what these codes generally pop up for is for an individual phaser or actuator. Now if you have an individual one showing the wrong reading, that is most likely a solenoid not acting correctly to tell the phaser to turn or a sensor reading incorrectly. There is no way that this chain can stretch and affect only one of these gears. So when you get these codes, you need to dig a little bit deeper. This 2010 Equinox with the 3.0 in it, throwing code P0017 is actually what made me want to make this video. Exhaust camshaft correlation bank one, meaning it is talking about only one of the cams on one bank actuator itself is not moving when it's supposed to or when the solenoid commands it to. So the quickest way to get to the bottom of this, get to the corresponding solenoid and unplug it. Get yourself a multimeter or a power probe, turn the key on and see which one of these is power. In this case it is the white with the, I believe that is a black tracer. Once you have determined which wire is power, Go ahead and plug it back in and then back probe into that power wire. Take that wire that you just found for power and back probed and send power to it and listen. Hear it click? Power probe makes this a lot easier. When I apply power to the solenoid and it clicks like that, it is a 99% chance that everything inside that solenoid is working as it should. If you don't have something like this, all you need to do is connect a jumper wire from your power of the vehicle over to the wire that you back probed. 
do it carefully and do not let that wire touch any metal on the car. If you do on accident, you'll know why I said not to. Move on to step two, air the car up. If you apply 12 volts to your power to the solenoid and it does not change the way the vehicle runs, that means that the actuator is stuck or sticking. That is what this was doing. So what I did was I filled this with a engine cleaner, engine flush. You can use sea foam or Marvel Mystery Oil. After I poured that in, I fired it up and I just actuated this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to free up that stuck actuator. Before, when I applied power, nothing happened. After running the cleaner through it, changing the oil and actuating this back and forth hundreds of times, I have successfully cleaned out the actuator and fixed this issue without having to replace the actuator or the timing chains. That car was destined for a timing chain replacement until I got to look at it and I cleaned out the actuator and it didn't need timing. I really did my best to cover all the important points in this video, but it is getting late. I'm sure I missed a lot and I can do other videos in the future, but my girlfriend is pissed. I gotta get my ass home. Y'all have a great night.